Okay, sorry, I had full memory on my phone, so I had to delete a bunch of files. But yeah, I know that just for... I left off at... A lot of us are going through a weird season right now where things are moving, things are maybe seeming a little disorganized. We're not necessarily sure what direction we're going. I think the reality of how man has their own plans, but really, like, we can't predict, you know, where we're going to be tomorrow. We can't say that we're going to settle somewhere for a year and make a business. You know, it's, if it's God's will, it is. And anyways, yeah, a lot of us are just in an interesting chapter where it seems like we're not sure what's going to happen. A lot of us probably are, I know, I'm, I feel like I'm in a season of waiting, but also moving at the same time. Um, so yeah, on top of that, I had another vision, um, this was like three and a half years ago. I was going through mega demonic attack and I started praying against it. I actually got my mother in this, um, prayer with me. We started praying and I saw this vision of a stormy cloud coming all just over the whole sky. And it was stormy, and it was thick and dense, and it, it took the sunlight away. It was very dark and oppressive, and it just had a lot of depression and fear and anxiety and all these things that distract us from the Prince of Peace. And so I was fighting against it with prayer, and then as I was going up and up and up, um, I actually broke through this giant blanket of cloud, and as I broke up, the sky was completely crystal clear. The sun was out. You know, it was a blue horizon, blue sky, and the, pre the, the, the peace of God was there again. And then I also saw that there were other Christians up here with me, or me with them. We were up here in the heavenly places, in the high places, in the spirit that we have access to no matter where we are in life. There weren't many, but they were there. There were especially not many people there my age. There were older people there, but there were all sorts of people there. And there was such an open space. And many people were called to be there. The reality of God's glory was made for all of us, even in the midst of turmoil and oppression and fear and depression and anxiety. But no one was really, not many people, were knowing their battles, knowing how they fight their battles. And it's really hard because when you're under this cloud of oppression, it seems impossible and you ask questions like, why am I even trying to fight? This will never end, I have no hope, I'm just stuck. There's that one, that's the one I deal with a lot when I'm struggling in the flesh. Um, I just feel stuck. But then when I was finally getting, and especially now, like that I've been consistently fighting and seeking God and realizing these revelations again, just the, the reawakening of his glory and destiny and purpose over my life, not just on a theoretical level, but in a, in a, in a living level that he has everything under his hands and we have to know it. We, we have the capabilities of knowing it. All of it these things are made for us and they're good I want to acknowledge that we have this right right now and whatever is distracting us is something that will be eliminated in our lives if we just believe if we just have the faith to step into his glory out of darkness and he will give us the things that equip us while we're walking in this life fighting against the evil one, conquering it with the blood of Jesus. We have these things. So there is hope. I realize all of this came to me specifically right now because we're in an interesting time. You know, where I'm currently at, where I've seen all over, I guess the United States really, everywhere from the Midwest to the West Coast and everywhere in between, public social relations are just different you go out in public and everyone's now scared everyone is skittish and now if you act 
at least for me, I, no, I know this is for a lot of people. Like, it seems like we all feel like we have to be in single file line and, you know, head straight looking and not looking around or dealing with any other business, just getting in, getting out. That's how everything feels. And people are posed and scared. And if we, I know if I feel like if I step out, I almost feel like someone's going to get offended, scream at me, hurt me, call the police on me, all these kinds of things. And I see this on people. There's just this fear on all of us. That's a spiritual battle. That's a spirit of oppression in the air. And so with these particular visions, I want to acknowledge that right now we are, as Christians, called to be the salt of the earth and to not be tasteless. The thing is that if we are naturally Christians, if we're naturally in love with Jesus, in this specific time, we will be salt. It'll be on a very loud volume in contrast to the past, in contrast to the last few years. As COVID's been breaking, kind of, not, I don't want to say breaking apart, and we don't know what's going to happen. There might be another crazy lockdown or whatever, but right now it seems like, you know, the mask mandates are coming down and things are starting to chillax, but now there's a different atmosphere we're left with. And people, I see people are just scared. They're scared to say something to a pedestrian, you know, crossing on the sidewalk or scared to even make eye contact. No one trusts anyone anymore. And I noticed that it's been way harder for me to go out of my way to tell anyone about Jesus and to, to step in faith and to pray and to, to see miracles happen and to preach the gospel. It's just been extra difficult. This last week, I've started to really step out of that, tell people about Jesus, share the gospel, pray for people, just minister. I took my guitar out to some public performing even secular and Christian, whatever, but I, I did it, and all of it just seems more posing, more uncomfortable. I feel like someone's about to call me out and scold me. But as I, I started stepping out of this, I realized that, that that spirit of fear is just a lie, it's a delusion, and no one wants it, and it just doing a little thing, it doesn't just, it, it, makes, it made an impact on me. It made me more bold and get out of that fear, but it also seemed to help the others around me, even if I wasn't directly talking with those. It just, us as natural human beings do that, and it was coming back to those normal things that we've always done. And so I just want to release that out loud. I want to release that over you too, that you can minister to others. I know right now for me, there's been a conviction about being transparent, about not blending in, about being salt, the salt of the earth, letting your flavor come out. And it's been extra hard, yet it's been extra tugging at me to know my identity in Jesus Christ and to let his supernatural spirit pour out of me onto this earth. I just feel it right now. It's like, it's like water, rich water just pouring out as I'm saying these things. It's just rich, nutritious sweet tasting honey <laughs> coming out of me, oozing out of me onto the, into the air. It's just freeing. But yeah, God has, God has called me to do this more. And it's been hard, but the more I've broken through, the more I've had victory. The more I've seen my identity, the more I, I'm hearing God's voice, the more I know his promises for me. We've been so distracted you know, I, a lot of us, especially my age, I'm 26, and people a little younger and a little older than me as well, just, I think a lot of us feel shorthanded because this, this quarantine, and a little, you know, way older people, people about to retire and stuff, everything's just going kind of hectic in our, in our economy because of the quarantine and, you know, the boomers now all retiring and such, and it's thrown a lot of us off. A lot of people have... A lot of businesses have fallen and a lot of careers have had to change course unwantingly and I just want to acknowledge that I have seen that I, I know a lot of us are but I've, I've seen that we are called to just focus on God's kingdom that nothing is guaranteed to last except for God's will and I know this is where he's taking all of us 
And so right now in the Christian world, in the Christianese church, you know, I've talked a lot of things and I probably sound a little passive or sarcastic or even just maybe bluntly negative. I've said a lot of things um, criticizing lies, you know, over the American church, knowing, you know, that we're not right. But I've struggled. I want to say I'm sorry if I have said anything that sounded a little offensive. Um, I want to acknowledge, though, that God is getting us out of our comfort zones. And it's the few who are really willing to go out of their way to seek the face of God and put everything aside to run after him. Those are the ones that are going to be used. Nothing else we can do. Nothing else we do will matter. And so the, the theme that I've really heard especially after stepping out and trying, just doing whatever I can to go out and tell someone about Jesus or to go out and just worship, even in my own prayer closet, is that the harvest is great, but the workers are few. There is such an immensely great harvest. And, there, and believe it or not, guys, yeah, there's a lot of people that, that when they hear about Jesus or God, they're immediately going to turn their back and scoff and mock you and whatnot. But there's also a lot of people that are outwardly hungry, and they're desperate enough to hear what you have to say if you really know God. And the, the spirit is more receptible right now because of that. People that never cared, people that never had to worry or deal with fear and felt always felt secure are now falling into places where they're getting a little insecure and starting to worry and fall into fear. And that's where we, any of us, can actually hear the voice of God. It's when we're vulnerable. They just need someone to share it with them. So that's where I'm at. I think that's all I have to release. I have a lot to release, actually. I have so much to release, but I'm going to end this right here for now because it's been a while. It's been about 17 minutes, I think, all together. So 18 minutes, whatever. But yeah, just to let you know, I do have YouTube videos scheduled until July 13th, I believe. And I'm, I've am i been posting YouTube shorts and um, just stuff in between. Um, just trying to keep my, my content going. It's not the quality I want it right now, and it's not really the kind of niche that I want, but it's, it's just what I'm managing. And as I'm seeking about what God actually wants me to do in regards to ministry and in regards to just... Who he made me to be I'm, I'm kind of dissecting all of that and realizing I've, I've been beating myself up and over, being overly critical about my craftsmanship um, in all of my aspects in life including YouTube videos so thank you guys for listening God bless you and I think that's all I really have to say Jesus is king and he loves you and he is calling you to something greater do not do not let yourself stay in your dark closet. Know that God is immediately ready to use you because, guys, severely the harvest is great. It is so richly abundant. It's ripe and juicy and it's ready. And the workers are very few. Very few. It's very, very few. Just, just I just have a conviction thinking about every all of these Sunday morning churches that are doing nothing, but there's nothing but pure, pew warm. Pew, pew warming it's all there is and it's it's hard to do anything beyond it it's not easy guys it's not but it's it's what we're called to do it's what we're called to do a lot of you aren't aren't necessarily called to do things like go out in public necessarily but i know there's a lot of tugs on a lot of people's chests about ministry about the gospel right now and if you just tap into it don't be scared just try give an effort that's all i can say because that's all i've done but god has shown through god has shown through it's his loving kindness that leads us to repentance. It's not about whether you're good enough or not. Are you being obedient? God is calling you what you're called to do right now, what you're capable of doing, the grace that he has given to you. Look at that. Look at his cross. Look at the serpent. I'm referencing John chapter 3. As Moses lifted up the servant, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Don't look at the servant, but <laughs> look at the cross. Look up to the cross. Look and live, as D.L. Moody would say. Okay, guys, that's all I have to say. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah.